Hey guys, Prince of Mastodon here. I'm going to do a DVD movie review for you guys. And tonight's movie is The Ninth Company. And this is a Russian, Finnish, Ukrainian produced movie. And it was directed by Fyodor Bondarchuk. He is the son of Sergei Bondarchuk. Uh, if you guys know Sergei Bondarchuk, he's a very uh, famous Soviet director. He directed such great epics as Waterloo and War and Peace, some of my my favorite movies, and those were set during the Napoleonic Wars. Um, he made a bunch of other movies, but uh, as for Fyodor Bondarchuk, I don't think I've ever seen a movie directed by him. This will be my first one, and uh, this movie is set during the Soviet-Afghan War, which took place during the, the 1980s, and it should be interesting. The um, reason why I'm reviewing this movie now it's because I started playing this uh, computer game called Ninth Company Roots of Terror, and uh, that that game is based on this movie. And honestly, I've had this movie for about a year now, maybe more than a year. I saw it at Best Buy for five bucks. I picked it up, and I never saw it. But since I'm playing the PC game, I figured, you know, it was uh, basically mandatory that I watch the the movie that the game's based on. I can give you what I I can give you my opinions on on how I feel about this movie. And it should be interesting because I, I don't... It's not every day that you see a movie set during the uh, the Soviet-Afghan War. I mean, I know there were there were other movies set during the Soviet-Afghan War, um, such as... Was it Rambo 3, I believe, was set during the Soviet-Afghan War? Um, same with uh, The Beast, which was about a uh, Soviet tank that was kind of lost behind enemy lines, and they have to try to fight their way back to, uh, to Soviet lines. And then, more recently, I saw a movie called Charlie Wilson's War, which is very good, starring Tom, Tom Hanks, and that was about a U.S. congressman, Charlie Wilson, who, uh, who sent uh, money and weapons to the uh, Mujahideen in their efforts to fight the Soviets. And that was uh, during the Cold War, of course. So, uh, I'm excited. I really want to see this movie, and uh, from what I hear, the action's really good. And um, I know a lot of Russian veterans don't really like this movie because it's not because you know because a lot of the facts are wrong. But uh, I'll see for myself. I'm gonna judge this movie as a movie, and and how well the the battle scenes excite me. So uh, let's go ahead and unbox this DVD, and then I'm gonna review this DVD. Alright guys, let's do this unboxing really quick, and in order to unbox it, I will have to call forth upon the the Soviet Air Force of Warper 2. I'm going to use a Yak-9. Let's go ahead and uh, do it. I'm going to use the little wing tip here to slice into this little uh, concave area. There we go. Good work, my friend. You can take off. Alright. That's pretty easy. You can always trust upon the talents of the uh, the pilots piloting the Yak-9. Look at that, good. Plastic comes off easily and there's no annoying tape to uh, to remove. Ninth company, my friends. Yeah, that was easy. Alright guys, so I just finished the, uh, the movie, um, Ninth Company. It was a, a 2 hour and 20 minute long movie, and um, it was pretty good, but it definitely had many uh, weaknesses, but um, let's see how to, how to begin this. Um, the movie, it has the same uh, structure as um, some other war movies I can think of. It, it shared a similar structure as uh, Full Metal Jacket and Jarheads in the, uh, in the aspect that the movie starts off with... Uh, with going with the soldiers going to basic training, and then they get shipped off to war. So um, in this movie, Ninth Company, the first hour consists of the introduction to the soldiers and to these uh, soldiers going through uh, basic training, and then uh, the remaining part of the movie actually takes place during uh, during uh, battle situations and and other war situations. Um, I would say the fact that this movie is probably the best movie to portray Soviet Afghan warfare. I would say based on that, this movie gets 
higher marks than what I would typically give a movie of this caliber. Um, what else? I liked all the, uh, the the tanks shown. I mean, like all the armored vehicles shown, all the helicopters and uniforms of the the Soviet army. I thought in that respect it was very excellent. Um, something I do want to complain about. Two things. One is that in every battle, there's always, I would say, over, over dramatic acting. Like in every every battle scene, like once people start shooting their guns, there's always a lot of guys crying and a lot of guys freaking out. I would say after the first battle, that would have stopped, just because you know they were used to the uh, to the gunfire, but. Every scene was like that. There were people freaking out and crying. It, it got a little bit annoying. Um, also, a very huge um, like drawback to the uh, to the movie are the battle scenes. Like they look really cool, but the the problem is that they weren't very um, they weren't very logical. It's hard to explain that. Like. Um, for instance, the very last battle for the hilltop, um, there were like maybe five, six, maybe like, maybe about ten guys, and they were surrounded by hundreds of Mujahideen soldiers, and for no reason, in the, ne in the very next video clip, it shows these ten guys who were completely surrounded, they were somehow safe again, like they were, they were taking a breather, and I don't, I don't understand how the Mujahideen retreated somehow and gave these guys time to breathe and then they would attack again. I, I don't understand that because they were, th these Russian guys were already surrounded. So um, there are a lot of instances where the battles did not flow in a logical manner and um, I would say that reason and the, the overdrama, that, that knocks this movie down. I would say on a scale of 1 to 5, I'd give this movie a 3.5 out of 5. It's a very, uh, it's, it's the best movie that portrays the, the Soviet-Afghan war. But you can't, you can't give a movie top marks just for being, you know, the best of its kind. Because in this respect, there, there aren't many movies of this kind to begin with. So, 3.5 out of 5 is a fair score. It's still a, it's still a pretty good movie though, like the budget's excellent, um, and just because the battles don't flow in a coherent fashion, I'm not gonna knock this movie completely. I I think it's a really good movie. I I definitely watch it again, um, but at times it did feel kind of long. I think they could have edited this movie down a little bit, maybe down to two hours, cut off twenty minutes make this movie more, you know, more athletic. I mean, athletic in the sense that it doesn't seem to bog down as much. Um, I think the movie definitely could have caught, definitely could have uh, cut out a lot of the, the over-drama. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend this movie, especially if you're a fan of the, the Soviet army, or if you're a fan, or I mean, or if, if, if you want to, like, see what the Soviet-Afghan war might have been like, then definitely watch this movie. But compared to other war movies, like other classics, I would not rank this movie above them. I would rank this movie a little bit beneath them. I would say this movie is is average in terms of, in terms of being a war movie. Um, am I glad that I watched? Yes, I am. I'm very glad that I watched this movie. It's, it's definitely worth seeing. Um, but yeah, it definitely had its weaknesses, um, but it also had its many strengths, and, uh, that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I hope this review was helpful for you guys if you guys wanted to see this movie. Um, I will see you guys later, and take care, comrades.